Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I thought I would do a sit down catch up video since it's been a little while. Let me fix this. I've got some questions from Instagram. So let's just get straight into it. So first question is, why did you have a break from YouTube? You'll probably know, if you followed me from when I first started doing YouTube, I used to religiously do three videos a week and I was really, really hard on myself to make sure that I was doing the three videos a week. And that was actually when I was working at the same time. So I was working part time and in the videos, I wasn't really getting any kind of break at all. I did have one child at the time though, to be fair. And then since having Marcus, I went down to doing two videos a week and then I'm also doing Instagram and then I'm also doing the podcast now as well. So having the two kids, Marcus was only in nursery for two days a week, two mornings a week. One of those mornings we were going into the podcast, which by the way, I mentioned it in my last video as well, but um, I'm now doing a podcast with my friends Ash, Reed, and Lauren Kerr. So the three of us do the Good Motherhood podcast, which is going really, really well. We've been doing it for about a year now and we record every week and YouTube takes up so much time. Like you guys don't realize you could put a 15 minute video on and it's taken all day to film and then it might be like another few hours on top of that to edit and it takes a long time. So I just had to park YouTube for a wee bit and it all worked out well because my plan was to come back in, am I even in focus? My plan was to come back in January and start getting regularly doing videos and scheduling myself better and like prioritizing my time and stuff. And Marcus has actually just started, he's turned three. So in Scotland, that's when you get more nursery hours. So he's now going to be in nursery for two and a half days a week, which will give me so much more time. Just such a mixed bag of questions, by the way, but let's just go for it. Um, there's quite a few questions about COVID. So COVID, how to manage it with your kids? What were your symptoms? If you don't know, we actually had COVID in December. So, so we basically had a night out with all my friends on at like the start of December, which never happens. Like I never go out, and this is the one night that we went out and everyone got COVID. Um, so it was like a, that was a Saturday night. And then it was like a few days after that people started testing positive. We'd had no symptoms, but obviously we were a close contact. So we went and got PCR tested on the Wednesday. We did no symptoms until we were literally on our way to the test center and Andy started feeling not well. And me being pure heartless, I was like, no, that's, it's in your head. It's in your head. Just cause you know that we're going there. You're probably just, you can start to feel the symptoms, but as soon as you get your negative, you'll be fine again. And I'm just saying this from my own experience because I tested way too often. I always went to PCR to get PCRs if I had like the slightest bit of what I thought was a symptom and it would I would totally exaggerate it in my head because I'm paranoid. But yeah, it turned out we were positive. So Andy did have it. He was in bed for like two or three days with like flu-like symptoms. Not awful, like he wasn't that bad. I was fine. I felt like I had a bit of, the cold and I felt like my chest felt quite heavy and I had a wee bit of a cough, but basically not anything that I would ever have thought was COVID and not anything that I would have normally done anything about. Like pre-pandemic, it would have just been like a mild little cold. It was only on day seven of our isolation that I lost my taste and my smell, which was horrific. That was by far my worst symptom. That was the one that I was nervous about. So I was actually eating loads in the build up to it because I was like, if I'm going to lose my taste and smell, then I want to at least remember what everything tastes like. Because you know, people are saying they're, they've never had their taste back or it comes back really weird and everything tastes disgusting. I was just imagining worst case scenario. So yeah, I was eating loads. And then on the Tuesday night, me and Andy were sitting watching the telly and I had like a big cake <laughs> and I was eating it and I was like, this tastes like nothing. I had iron brew, tried that, didn't taste like anything. And then I went and took, I literally went into the, the fridge, took a big thing of Branson pickle, smelled it, couldn't smell a thing. And it's horrible. Like I always thought it would be, you would just feel normal until you went to smell something strong. Sorry, I'm paranoid because my nails are horrible just now. And I always thought it would be when you went to smell something, you wouldn't be able to smell it, but you're aware of it all the time because you can't even smell the air, like it's such a weird feeling to describe. If you've had it, you'll probably know what I mean, but it's almost like your nose just feels like it doesn't exist. You can't smell the room around you. You can't smell, when you walk outside, you can't smell like the fresh air. Um, so that lasted for me for about 10 days, I think. And I actually, like I hated it. I lost five pounds because I couldn't eat anything. I was just like, what is the point? Everything just tastes like nothing. And then it started to come back gradually. My smell started to come back. People had told me on Instagram to do like smell therapy at home. 
smell therapy and smell loads of the same strong smells. So a girl said to me, pick three scents that are really strong and just throughout the day keep smelling them. So mine was Branson Pickle, body butter, like raspberry body butter and coffee. And I just kept going and smelling them all the time and gradually those three things came back and I could smell them and only them. And then I just started introducing more things that I would just keep smelling and then eventually my smell came back. And then on Christmas morning, my taste came back, which was just the best Christmas miracle ever. Up until that point, I'd had very, like, very faint taste coming back, but that breakfast was the be best breakfast ever. And I was like, Andy, I can actually taste this, it's so good. The thing I meant to say was that the kids also caught it from us. So we were seven or eight days into isolation when the kids caught it and I'd been testing them constantly um, and they got it. Marcus actually started with a temperature. He had a temperature for like overnight and the next day, but very mild and he was fine basically. He had a bit of a temperature, a bit run down feeling, all of our no symptoms whatsoever. And yeah, our last, their last day of isolation was Christmas day. So that meant that we actually had Christmas day in our house. We couldn't go out and see anyone. Me and Andy were out of our isolation at that point. So we were able to go over to the shops and stuff because we'd done our 10 days, but obviously somebody always had to be at home with the kids. So Christmas day, we were home with the kids and we actually had such a good Christmas. It was really, really good. Um, it was so chilled out. They just played with their toys all day. Then we had our big Christmas dinner. It was like, it was brilliant. And then the next day, because we were out of isolation the next day, we went to my mum's and had our Boxing Day. Like we basically had a second Christmas on Boxing Day. And then we saw Andy's mum and dad the next day and had another Christmas. It was really, really good. And I have to admit, I feel so much more um, like relaxed knowing that at least we've had it now. And I know we can get it again, but at least we've had it and been okay the first time round. I know loads of people that had COVID, let me know in the comments if you had COVID over Christmas or if you've got it just now. Like loads of my family have it just now as well, it's just everywhere. Someone said, how have you coped with all that anxiety of the pandemic the last two years? I was very, very anxious about it. My niece is high risk. Um, my mum, I worry about my mum because she's had a heart attack before. Andy's mum's very vulnerable and you obviously just like panic that not only could they get it, but could you be the person to actually give them it? And that was always the worry, like, we don't want to bring it into the house with them. I've relaxed a lot since we've actually had it. Um, and I'm not being, like, totally careless. I'm still wearing my mask, cleaning my hands, all that sort of stuff. But I've relaxed a bit because we've had it now. Um, and if we get it again, I don't imagine we would be worse than we were. But who knows, touch wood. Someone said, how did you manage your isolation with the kids? It's hard. Like, it is hard. But I have to say, see, for those 10 days, it wasn't that bad. Um, the weather was okay, so we are out in the garden. We actually had planned to give them a trampoline for Christmas, and this was, like, the week before Christmas, and I was like, let's just give them the trampoline now. So we ordered it from Smith's. It came within, like, two days, and we set it up in the garden, and that was, like, obviously it's the novelty toy. So for, like, two or three days... The last two or three days, they were just out on the trampoline constantly. Someone said, how long did it take you to feel like you were getting somewhere with your Instagram or YouTube? I don't know, to be honest. Like, I was really, really strict at the start with making sure that I did YouTube videos consistently and never missed a day, everything like that. Um, I think I felt like I was getting somewhere, like, was able to do it full time when I was off on maternity with Marcus because that was, like, my trial period. And I said to myself, like, this is the amount that I need to make every month from working for myself and if I can consistently make that then I'll be safe to not go back to work. So since I was able to do that for the full like 10, 11 months that I was on maternity, um, that's when I was able to say right I'm not going to go back now. Yeah, I would just say just keep going for it, being consistent and um, yeah, doing what you enjoy, planning, all that sort of stuff. I feel like such a hypocrite saying this because this is not what I've been doing for the last few months. But, um, yeah, I'm going to get back into it, I promise. I'm going to start doing my YouTube properly again because I miss it. Like, putting that video out on Monday and getting loads of comments and people messaging saying that they've missed my videos and stuff, I was like, I should not have had such a long break and I really, really missed YouTube. Someone said, how are you finding your Botox now? Is it wearing away or do you think it's lasting well? So let's check that actually, right? So it's definitely, I've noticed the last week it started wearing off because like I can get lines back again. 
Um, so when was it that I got it actually? So I got it on the 6th of November and we're now on the 13th of January. So that's like two and a half months. I need to sneeze. Yeah, um, so that's like two and a half months <clears throat> and it started to wear off. I still definitely, it still works a lot between my eyebrows. Um, so, but I would be doing it again in February. And I think the way it works is, what I've been told is that the more you get it, the less often you need to get it. So I've now had it twice. I think is it twice? I think I've had it twice. So one was a top up in between. So like I've, I've been three times. Um, I, I do really like it. I noticed a difference. I noticed as soon as it started to come back, like it really is wearing off now. So someone said, what are your house plans for this year? Are you doing any renovations? Um, so yes, I've always, I've always got plans. I'm always doing something. I'm still trying to do that thing, like finish each room because every, every room needs a little bit. Like I'm looking at that wall just now. It needs repainted because the kids knocked one of the pictures that was on the wall and scraped it all. So the walls in here need repainted. I need to do, um, I want to put curtains up over the patio doors, which I've actually not had curtains in my house before. Does that sound mental? We've always had blinds. But I want to get some nice curtains for the patio. I've just redone um, like the dining chairs, dining table. What else do I want to do in here? Um, I need a new carpet in the hall, but we're not going to do that until after the extension. I need a new bathroom suite um, because the one that I had, God knows what I did, right? But I've basically cleaned it with something that is like acid, apparently, because all of the all of the material that's on it, not material, all of the like gloss units have bubbled um, and it just looks horrific. And actually I cleaned the what's it called, like the door handle, and that has also bubbled, so God knows what I used or what was on the cloth. Yeah, we need a new bathroom suite, which I'm not gonna complain about, well I am, because I don't have the money to do it, but I um, actually would like to do an update in there. As you know, we are waiting on doing our extension this year, so we, all the admin side of it is still going through, but we're hoping to start, if everything goes to plan, we're hoping to start in the spring. It's gonna take a while because all the quotes that we had, from different places where really really expensive like if you've had work done in the last two years you'll know that everywhere is charging an absolute fortune and it was literally about 20 grand more than we were expecting um so we're going to kind of self-manage it um obviously andy's an electrician all his friends like have some kind of a trade so we're going to try and do it basically on a budget and our friends have actually just done the same thing themselves so um the good thing is they can give us like tips and stuff on how to do it and what mistakes not to make and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna keep you updated on the way, but I do have to say it, it's gonna take a while. I've also been working on the kids room, so I'm gonna do a, um, a video possibly next week showing you the kids room updates because um, I've put in bunk beds, I've redone like the whole layout of their room and stuff. We're sharing all of that next week, hopefully. There's been a few bumps in the road. If you follow my Instagram, you'll know that. <laughs> Honestly, it's been a nightmare. But the kids room is looking really, really good. I'm so happy with it. Like, much better storage and stuff. So I can't wait to share that. I have to keep on top of cleaning with two boys. Send help. Honestly, same. Like, same. I have no idea. I'm trying so hard. Like, one of my New Year goals, like, unofficial goals, is to make my way around each room, do a massive declutter. And honestly, I know that I sound like a broken record because I say this all the time. But clutter kills my soul and I don't want it in my house and I know after Christmas I've got too much stuff in here and not enough storage space so I'm doing little updates. I'm actually going to see that sideboard unit there. It's not making good use of the space so I'm going to go to Ikea and get like another unit for there and update like the storage in my living room. I might film it. If I'm going to do a weekly video, a weekly cleaning video on a Monday, then I might make that my cleaning video is doing declutters, which I've done that before um, and it always went down really well. So maybe we'll do that. Let me know if you'd like to see like a weekly declutter of each room. Um, oh, I'm actually buzzing to do that. That's a good idea. Let's do that. I want to do a deep cleaning declutter because I need to pull this couch out and get underneath it. I wonder if I could do a video where I declutter, clean, and then also do finishing touches, like touch up paint, all that sort of stuff. Maybe we'll do that and I'll try and get the curtains sorted for this weekend. Um, someone said, tell me your fave bath bath and pamper product. I'm a cheap date and I, for bath stuff, I love Redox. Like it literally cost a pound and I love it. Redox muscle soak was my craving. It was my obsession when I was pregnant 
and I'm still obsessed with it. I absolutely love every dog's bath. What are your long-term goals? I don't know. I don't know actually. <laughs> I don't really have long-term goals. Um, just kind of like going with the flow. I think, see when you're doing a job like this, it's very like, you don't, you just don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know if I'll still be doing the same thing next year. I hope that I am, but you just never know. Um, and it might not work out next year. Um, if you completely lose interest in it, then it's no longer fun. So if that happened, then I would go and do something different. Yeah, I think if I was gonna go and do something different, then I would like to do something social media based, like behind the scenes maybe, or I would love to do something interiors, like an in interiors category. Have you got any holidays planned? Now you've all had COVID, I guess it's less worrying. Yeah, it definitely is less worrying. And I would actually love to have been able to go away this month or next month because different countries have different rules, but the 90 day thing, like if you te have tested positive in the last 90 days, then you're exempt from doing tests when you're having to travel because you can still test positive in that 90 days. So ideally I would have liked to go away this month, but that's not gonna work out. Um, we are gonna be in March with Andy's mum and dad, which is kind of, we just don't know if it's gonna happen. Already been postponed. So yeah, fingers crossed, we're gonna go to Spain in March. It's not gonna be like the warmest month, but we're going to this place that they have and it's got a heated pool. So yeah, hopefully it'll be like warm enough for us to do that. I would also love to go away um, in like June or something to Tenerife. I'm dying to go to Tenerife. Oliver's obsessed with watching um, water park videos, like people going about with GoPros in their head. And I would love to take him to a water park. I don't know if he'd even be brave enough to go down there, like even just for like four or five days. Oh, it's even talking about it. I generally get like an ache in my chest because I would love to go. I would love to go back to Portugal, um, which would be weird because we haven't been since before my dad died and the place has changed so much. So. I don't know, part of me is like, I don't know if I would want to go back, if it'd be weird or if it would be like a bit sad to walk about because that was like my dad's favourite place. But at the same time, we have got so many nice memories from Portugal and from that little village. And I would love for the boys to go and have like the same memories and stuff. So yeah, I think we will end up going back. Every time I see photos of people on holiday on the beach, seeing like the sunsets on the beach is just... I don't know if anyone else gets it. It genuinely makes me want to cry because I miss it so much. Someone said, are you planning on having any more children? Definitely not. Definitely not. But I might get a cat. What are your resolu resolutions or 2022 goals? So I want to grow my YouTube channel more. Um, I'd love to hit a new milestone this year. I would love to hit 50k. I'm on 35 just now. I never really talk about that. Like I, I, I haven't had goals for my YouTube subscriber, like subscribers or whatever for ages, but I would just like to set it, set it something. I would love to hit 50K um, or 60, or let's just put it really high. I'd love to hit 1 million viewers. <laughs> I'm just joking, but you can dream. I'd love to continue doing the podcast and grow that more as well. That's been going so well, and I don't like to blow my trumpet, trumpet, but yeah, we've just absolutely loved it. It's so much fun. I love the fact that we just go into the studio on like a Tuesday or Wednesday morning, and get we get a wee coffee, and we just sit and chat for like two hours, and it's just, it's brilliant. We work with 1010 Podcast, so we go into their studio. Um, they produce it and everything for us, so it's just win-win for us if we just go in and have a laugh, and we literally cry laugh. You guys have no idea, right? You can hear us laughing on the podcast, but they have to edit out so much because sometimes we're, sometimes we're literally crying. Right, this is the last one. How is vegetarian eating going, um, and how's your diet, all that sort of stuff? So. I haven't been great with the vegetarian stuff recently. I'm a really, really fussy eater, which I hate, but I'm very fussy. I went, I would say, I, I went kind of partially vegan, as in I stopped having dairy, stopped having eggs. The only thing that I was still having was not even butter. I was kind of not having butter. Then I went off oat milk for a little bit. Um, then I went off almond milk for my tea. Um, there's a lot of things that I didn't like anymore and I found it really difficult that the kids were wanting normal foods, non-vegetarian foods, and Andy wanted non-vegetarian and I was the only one that was having to make things for me. So I've cut it back a little bit. I'm still trying to have plant-based stuff and try and not have <coughs> as much dairy and stuff, but I want to like ramp it back up again. And I want to ramp back up my exercise as well. I have been doing home gym classes, which has been really, really good. So I'm gonna keep doing that for my three times a week 
um, like 20 minute classes and I want to start running as well. Again, broken record, same resolutions every year. Haven't quite done it yet, but maybe this is the year. This is the year for me. Ah, oh, yeah. It's funny, because if I look back at my resolution, I don't have to make new resolutions. I could literally go back to last year's diary and find them and it will be mostly the same things. Um, but that's just life. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Let me know what other videos you would like to see. If you'd like to see the declutter thing, I can start doing that this weekend and put it out on Monday. Um, I'm going to try and do like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but if you've not got one on a Wednesday, it'll go up on a Thursday. I'll try my best to be consistent as possible. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Don't forget to hit subscribe before you go.